walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big and stand-up comedy has only recently became a topic of conversation thanks to this little show. I am not a prostitute. I'm a comic. Is there a difference? Yes. Prostitutes get paid more. Hilarious. You should go into comedy. I did. In Many are familiar with the groundbreaking female stand-up comics of the 1960s like Joan Rivers and Phyllis Diller. However, in the years before, generations of women were gracing the stage of vaudeville and in nightclubs showing that women could be just as funny as men. Though, even more than half a century later, this is a glass ceiling that many women are still struggling to crack through. Society largely defines the 1950s through the polished lens of the situation comedies of the era. Idealized versions of femininity place women like Barbara Billingsley and Donna Reed on a pedestal. comedian Jean Carroll came along and as she made the tricky climb to prominence in the very male-dominated field of stand-up comedy she incorporated much of these elements of femininity into her act shining a light in her own way on gender roles every time every time Jack came near me I got hot and cold all over when he kissed me I broke out in a rash and I got sick to my stomach I thought gee this must be love I never felt so sick in my life so I married him and you know what I found out afterwards it wasn't love I was allergic to him According to the New York Times, Carol was born in Paris in 1911, but her family quickly found their way to the United States. Her career began gaining traction into her teens as she started on vaudeville as a dancer. She developed and evolved continually as a performer, working with her future husband Buddy Howe on stage. Her 2010 obituary bills the act as a dance act punctuated by humorous patter written by Carol. However, once World War II rolled around, Howe found himself drafted and Carol found herself a solo act. Upon his return from the service, the Times writes that he realized the act was better off without him and he became a talent agent instead. Carol's contemporaries were making names for themselves on radio. Women like Gracie Allen, Mary Livingston, and Portland Hoffa were household names. However, each of these women worked closely as a double act with their husbands, George Burns, Jack Benny, and Fred Allen respectively. Moms Mabley blazed a trail for each of them beginning as early as the 1910s. However, institutionalized racism and sexism kept her from reaching a wider audience until the 1960s when she was nearing 70 years old. Went on, didn't have no money, and I married another old man. <laughs> Older than the other one. Old. Older than his birthday. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> he was so ugly, honest to goodness, he hurt my feelings. By the 1950s, Carol was largely alone as a solo female headliner. She appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show often, with a number of sources reporting it was over 20 times. Let me back to our stage after too long an absence, Jean Carroll. So let's have a. <laughs> back on the show again and I want to congratulate you. You've taken off a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. Your uh, hair is different. Everything about you is different. You really think so? Uh-huh. Why do you hear the jokes? Oh, no, don't tell me you're going to be picking on your husband again. Well, who do you want me to pick on? Alan King's wife? No, but he's such a nice little guy. You people really should see him. Who? My husband they should yeah. see? I should see my husband. Oh, stop. Do you mind if I do a little picking? <laughs> Meanwhile, she appeared in the admittedly short-lived situation comedy, The Jean Carroll Show on ABC. The series aired as a late season edition in 1953 on Wednesday nights. Carroll received a write-up in an article entitled TV's Top Comedians in December of that year. But the notices were not complimentary of the series, it writes. She can toss off a gag with the best of them, but her current video show is weak and inadequate. With the right script, Miss Carroll could make the grade. 
The series was also examined by Bob Lejac in his book, Single Season Sitcoms, 1948 to 1979. He writes, Jean, however, quickly became disenchanted with the series, and after only 11 episodes, she announced to ABC that she no longer wished to continue. It quickly disappeared from the Wednesday night lineup. To be fair, TV guides of the period show it going against Dragnet in a number of regions. Ouch. Lejac continues, Jean enjoyed doing stand-up much more than doing the series, and she appeared countless times on variety shows, most notably The Ed Sullivan Show, on which she allegedly received close to $10,000 per appearance. Watching her appearances, a small number of which can be found on YouTube, is fascinating. She typically appears in full evening wear, hearkening to these idealized feminine visions that I mentioned. Her humor is monologue-based, written by Carol herself. While her delivery is snappy and feels very of the period, the longer form might be a bit of a struggle for modern audiences. However, what is perhaps most interesting in the examination of her humor is how subversive it feels, particularly for this period in history. I got a husband, handsome, you'd never call him. But this guy, no, please don't laugh because he's the most wonderful man. He's always full of fun. He's always making jokes. He's laughing. Nothing bothers him. He drinks. <laughs> I'm really not complaining because he is easy. Like I say to him, honey, don't you think you ought to have a little bite to eat? He says, sure. I say, what do you want? He says, make anything. I say, what do you want? He says, anything. I say, what kind of anything? Which anything? Because no matter what anything you make, it's not the anything he wanted. <laughs> what do you want? Anything. Now I go to my kid, my rotten kid, and I say, honey, how about some food? She says, all right, I'll have a little something. <laughs> I said, I'm not cooking two separate meals this afternoon. This woman is the very image of idealized femininity of the 1950s and early 1960s. However, her jokes paint a very real image of family life during this suburban white picket fence era of the post-World War II baby boom. Like, like people say to me, gee whiz, what'd you see in him? Why'd you marry him? Well, he's like a child. And you know, all women love children, even if they're 35. But he's just like, he is, he's like a baby. Every day it's something, like this morning he woke with a headache. And it's his own fault. I keep telling him when he jumps out of bed, it should be feet first, you know. <laughs> But he's good to me, he is, he's so good to me. Always showering me with presents, like when I went on my honeymoon, gave me a beautiful present, a matching set of luggage, three shopping bags. And then... <laughs> oh, and that honeymoon, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Two weeks of heaven, two weeks. Sometimes I wish he had come along with me. But you know, oh no, don't laugh, he's so thoughtful. He stayed home, you see, he, he thinks of everything. He said if we were seen together in the hotel, people would talk. But one thing about this hotel, the ad, you should have read the ad, it said magnificent view, cross ventilation, good hunting, and it was true. The view, I, you should have seen the ventilation, a hole in the ceiling, a hole in the floor. But the view was gorgeous, I know, because there was someone looking through each hole. When it was a cultural expectation for women to get married, keep house, and relish family life, Carol showed this wasn't always the case. Things weren't always great with your husband, and a woman doesn't always like her own child. When everything was supposed to look effortless, sometimes scraping together an attractive look and an easy life took work. While this humor may not leap out to more contemporary audiences, Jean Carroll was breaking down new fronts. She took a step forward when there were precious few women in the field of stand-up comedy, and she shone a light on the fact that there wasn't a typical female experience. Being a wife and a mother wasn't always as easy as pop culture made it look, and that was perfectly fine. Stay tuned for more here at Female Gaze Productions as we look at classic popular culture through historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at kpierce624. And as always, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.